Hi everybody, this is Gabe with Harvest Plugins, and today we're going to be taking a look at our latest plugin called Forager. So Forager is basically a plugin that allows you to search through chords in order to create new combinations in a unique way, using a little bit of randomness and using your own creativity in the process. So let's take a look and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. To set up Forger, you're going to need two things. One is a MIDI track with Forger on it, and the other is an instrument of your choice. You're going to want to take your instrument and basically route the output from Forager into the instrument track. So in Ableton, the way to do this is to change this all ins to just the Forager track and to change this post effects to Forager, and then to change the track mode into this in setting. Then you're going to want to arm the Forager track because Forager actually does take MIDI input. Once you have it all hooked up, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is open the interface for Forager and choose a note selection. So I'll show you this just for the sake of demonstration, what happens. So here I have this little keyboard and if I choose uh, a C note, you can see nothing really happens. If I choose an E note, nothing happens either. But then if I add a, a G, uh, you can see the C major has appeared on the right hand side. So if I click this B note, another thing happens. Two more chords show up, a C major seven and an E minor. What's going on here is that Forger is providing a list of every chord that could fit that uses those notes that you select in this little keyboard. So the more notes you add, the more chords are possible. And so if we add the rest of the C major scale, essentially what we have here is a list of every chord that uses these C major notes so in other words, every chord that is in C major. So this allows you to explore every chord in C major that you might not be thinking of, every chord that you wouldn't normally think of. Uh, I know for myself, I normally wouldn't go for a G13 flat nine because it's not really in my repertoire. It's not in my vocabulary when I put my hands on the keyboard. And so this kind of allows you to eliminate your blind spots when it comes to what chords you can and can't use. I think it gives you a lot more flexibility just by showing you your options. So if I press this long randomize button, what happens is it randomly assigns chords from this list to this grid. So you can see this grid is in no particular order. It just randomly took them from the list. What this grid is for is for MIDI input. So the lowest note is C1 uh, for MIDI input and the highest note is D sharp two. And so now you can use your instrument to control these chords as opposed to just clicking on them. So I have a MIDI controller in front of me. And so now as I hit these pads, the corresponding chords work. Now there's a couple things about this that are helpful. Uh, for one, you can drag these around and click and drag, and then you can switch positions of these chords. You can also take any chord from the list and manually place them onto your grid. You can randomize as many times as you want and that'll randomly assign new chords to each grid position. But if you wanna keep some chords because you're working with them, but you wanna just refresh the rest of them, you just go ahead and right click them, they turn blue. Now only the chords that are not blue become randomized. In other words, the blue ones are locked in position and they won't change. And so you can keep exploring chords. So if you're working with these, these particular Fs and Gs right here, they won't go anywhere once you randomize. So it's like this that you're able to create chord progressions. And let's just see if we can come up with anything uh, with this drum beat I have and see if it sounds good at all. And you know, some of them work and some of them don't. So I'll right click the ones that work and keep cycling through the ones that I don't like. Okay, there's a couple other things that you can do here. Um, first of all, you can choose notes that are not in C major and now you're getting this unique scale. You know, it's not actually a scale. I mean, it's not a normal scale, but it is a C major that happens to include a B flat. Now, if you right click one of these notes, what it does is it narrows down your list to only chords that contain this specific note. It still must contain these other notes. So in this case, it must contain a G, but it also cannot contain one of these black notes. So now we only have chords with a G in it. And you can get even more specific, you can put an A in it too. So now what we're looking at is all chords in C major that have a G and an A in it. And you can do any combination of notes that you like. And you can even do this for the notes that are outside of the scale. So if you only want to look at chords that are mostly in C major, but they happen to have this C sharp in it, 
So what this is doing is basically allowing you to explore chords that are just barely outside of your key. So if you're in C major and you want a chord that's just barely outside of the key, that's just a little bit challenging to the rest of your progression, you can just right click one of these uh, notes that are outside of your scale. And it's a great way to do that. And that narrows down your list just to those chords that only contain that wrong note. Another way of going about this is this loose matches knob that we have here. Um, if you turn this loose matches knob to one, what you're telling Forager is to say, I want all the C major chords, but I also want all the chords that have one note outside of C major. So it's a mixture of chords that are in C major, but then also have one note. So this is different from just one specific note. So here in this case, you have one specific note that you must, that you want the list to only comprise of. With the loose matches, if you set it to one, it's any of these black notes, but not multiple of them. It can only be one of these black notes. So, and these features can be used in conjunction. So now you're saying, I'm looking for chords that are mostly in C major, but that they must contain a D and they are allowed to contain one note outside of C major. And this is a great way of exploring your blind spots, essentially. Your, the things that your muscle memory won't allow you to do, Forager will allow you to discover these chords in a unique way it's really inspiring to work this way because you can get out of your patterns and surprise yourself using this tool. Okay, so we have three chords locked in place and now I'm gonna set the loose matches up to one. Now we're gonna get a lot of chords that are outside of our scale and that hopefully sound a little bit challenging that make that add a little bit of intrigue to our chord progression. So now that I've explored these chords, I found this E9 sus4, which actually sounds interesting next to my other chords. And you can see I'm exploring chords that are outside of my scale just a little bit, not too much, just mostly in C major, but have one degree outside of the scale. So let's keep exploring the features of Forager. Here we have a filter section, and basically you can just uh, quickly pick out chords that you're looking for. So if you just wanna see those C chords that are in C major, here they are. And if you wanna just see the D ones, likewise, here those are. And of course you can do combinations from there too. So C and G, those are all the C and G chords in C major. And if you have loose matches, it still works the same way, C and G. If you just wanna see those major seven chords and maybe those minor seven chords, since I have nothing in the root column, it's only limiting by chord type. But then if you just want potentially, you know, E of any of these potential chords, and then it has the E minor, E minor seven, doesn't include the E sus chords or anything like that because those are not on the list. Now you can clear this list and you can do the opposite, which is exclude chords. So if you don't, if you want everything but a C, then you go ahead and put C in your root column of your exclusions. So now we have Fs and Gs, Ds, and everything but C. And say, you can do as many as you want, no Cs, no As. Uh, you can also do excluding the chord by type, which works the same way as filter. So I, let's see, I don't wanna see any major chords. I put major in the list. I don't wanna see any 11, or let's say 13 flat nine or 11 chords. Put those on your exclusions and you'll just have a more basic list. Using the filters and exclusion is a great way to kind of bring things down to earth. Let's say you just want those major and minor chords and you want the diminish. This is just C major chords, no frills, no variations. This is just, as, as bare bones as it gets for C major, but sometimes that's what you need, that's what your song is calling for, so. So you might have noticed there's an octave control in each grid square. So here's the root octave. You go minus one, minus two, you can go up one, Likewise, there's an inversion control here. So for a chord like D minor, you, you can have the root inversion, which is the default. You can press inversion one, and that is now the first inversion. And then inversion two, second inversion. And then you can go an octave down as well. And that's just a great way of exploring even further what these chords have to offer by changing their phrasing and helping them work together a little bit better. Just a few more details here before we finish up. There's an octave control here on the list. This does two things. The first thing is change the octave preview or change the octave of the preview of each chord. So if I press C, that's at zero, octave zero. 
If I do minus one, it's lower. And if I do plus one, it's obviously higher. Now, if I have it at minus one and I press randomize, what this does, this minus, it basically changes the default setting of the octave of each chord. So when I randomize, every chord that now comes into the grid is at minus one. And this is just, if you're just trying to just do a quick octave change for your instrument, sounds great. And here you might've noticed another octave control right next to the grid. This is different in that it allows you to shift the octave of your grid only. So you, it, let's say you've been working and you have different values here and some of them are like this. You do plus and it'll do everything plus one. And if you do minus, it'll do everything minus one. Uh, other features we have going on is this undo and redo. So you can see as I press undo, those octave changes I just made are getting undone all the whole grid octave is going undone, and even the randomization is and the locking, every step that you've made along the way can be undone and redone uh, and explored just in case you lost something that you wanted to go back to. This is one more feature that we have and we're, we're continuing to develop this feature, but if you go into the top left drop down, there's a thing that says random inversion. So what this does is whenever you click randomize, the chords are randomized, but the inversions of those chords are also randomized. So this is just a way of getting crazy and exploring for now, a way of randomizing the process just for a little more added fun. And I really do like this A minor with the fourth inversion. That's a really interesting chord. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped you. I hope if you do decide to go on and buy Forager that it helps you a lot in your music making. I know it has for myself and I hope you choose to do the same for your music. Um, thanks so much for watching. This has been Gabe with Harvest Plugins, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.